Now, if you're interested in motorized roller or visions blinds, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how the electrics work, and then we're going to have an honest conversation about the pros and the cons of using motorized blinds. Now, the main focus of this video will be on battery operated blinds and how they work. At the end of the video, we will deal with hardwired blinds, the pros, the cons, and when you would likely choose to use a hardwired blind. So I'm going to demonstrate the electric operation. So here's a remote control and most remote controls will look like this or will be similar. So the remote itself is pretty straightforward. We have an up button, a down button and a stop button. And then we have a left and a right. So we'll start with these two bottom buttons, left and right, because they select the channel, i.e. which blind we're going to operate. So, at the moment, you can see I'm on channel one. If I tap the right, I go to two, three, four, five. If I go past five, we get to see them all illuminated. When they're all illuminated, that means that we're gonna operate all of the blinds. If I carry on one more, I go back to one, two, three, or I can use the left button to go backwards, and you can see it just cycles through the various channels. So at the moment I'm on channel one. And if I hit the up button, then the blind will start to go up. Now, if I hit the stop button, the blind will stop. If I hit the up, stop, up, stop, and so on. Now, if I hit the up button, and just leave it, the blind will go to where we have programmed it to stop. So that's the uppermost position, which is part of what we call the settings. The settings tell the blind where the top position is and where the bottom position is. Now, if I hit the down button, the blind will now start moving down and I can stop it anywhere I like. That's a shut position. Open, shut, open, shut. And if I just hit the down button and leave it, the blind will now transition to the bottom. So there you go. Now, on this particular remote control, the stop button will also take the blind to a pre-programmed favorite position. So when the blind is not moving, just pressing the stop button like so, will take this blind to its first open position. Now it could have taken it to any position we like, that's just where we've programmed this particular blind. Now on the remote control, I have all of the lights illuminated. So now any signal I send will go to all of the blinds linked to this remote control. So if I push the stop button, which is my favorite position, and you'll see all of the blinds that are linked to this remote go to their first open position. If I now hit the down button, because I'm still linked to all blinds, all of the blinds will travel to their shut position. So having seen a demonstration, we now have a little conversation about the pros and the cons of motorized blinds, and then we'll get into some of the more frequently asked questions that people have about them. So let's talk pros and cons. Now, many people will talk about motorized blinds as being child safe. Well, in truth, any blind fitted nowadays should have child safe manual controls. So actually, for me, that's not perhaps the biggest advantage because it's kind of irrelevant in that sense. But where motorized blinds when it comes to children become very relevant is that when you take a roller blind or a visions blind, it's very easy if you yank the chain to cause the blind to jump and then no longer run straight and then the blind can perhaps run off into the mechanism causing damage to the edge of the fabric. Equally, if you don't use the chain properly and you pull the chain across at an angle, again, you can equally damage the edge of the material as the blind is going up and down. So for durability and protection of the blind, 
motorized blinds in children's rooms has a real advantage because they're not touching the blind in any way. Yes, children will be children and they'll play with the remote control to begin with. However, they'll soon get bored. Motorized blinds also have an advantage when it comes to windows that are much more difficult to reach, like for example, a kitchen sink. It's much more difficult to reach across for the control when the sink is in your way. You may also have another window that maybe has furniture in front of it or a chair in front of it, something like that. And again, that's where motorized blinds have a real advantage. Doors especially have an advantage because if you think about a door length, then there's obviously a lot of rolling with a manually operated blind in order to get the roller or the visions blind fully up into its cassette housing. And another advantage of electric blinds on doors is the ability for you to take the remote control outside with you and lower the blind. Now, motorized blinds have a real advantage also when it comes to security with some caveats. And that is that firstly, this is going to apply to motorized blinds in the ground floor of your premises. If you have motorized blinds on the upper floor, it's mostly going to be the case that they might not be observed where certainly people will be paying far more attention who you don't want to pay attention to anything that's happening on the ground floor. So motorized blinds combined with a home hub allow you to set schedules and have the blinds moving by themselves or you can log into the app and just simply move the blinds about as you see fit. The caveat to that is I would suggest that from a security point of view and a lot of people do use motorized blinds in conjunction with the hub for security it's also essential to have some form of automated or home automated lighting so that you can shut the blinds at night but have lights come on and I think that those work really well together. One of the great advantages of the system that we use is that if in the beginning you had a blind manufactured and installed and it was manually operated it can be converted at a later date to a motorized blind. So let's get into some of the frequently asked questions about the motorized blinds. So how are the motors powered? Well, they're powered by a lithium ion battery. You do not need to remove anything from the blind in order to recharge it. You will simply plug in a charging cable, just like your mobile phone. You'll plug it into the blind and the blind will then recharge. Now, the frequency by which you will do this will depend on the frequency of use and the overall width and drop of your window. So as an example, if we took a set of French doors, then if those doors were being used every single day, fully up, fully down, you would probably need to charge the motor every two to three months. Now our experience of motors has shown us that particularly on sort of the normal windows, if there is such a thing, is that the battery can last way over the year. So we have a golden rule, charge the blind every three months. In truth, the batteries will probably last considerably longer, but we absolutely recommend that you should top up your batteries every three months. Obviously, another question that we get asked all the time is how reliable are they? Well, we've been selling the motors for a number of years and absolutely there are the occasional problems, but for the volume that we sell and we keep a very close eye on the problems that we do have, the number of problems that we see and experience are very, very small. There is a three year warranty on the motor. The motors are easy to replace and 99% of all problems that we see with electric motors, nothing to do with the motor, nothing to do with the battery, it's down to the owner. And it's simply the case that they don't keep them charged. One of the problems that we definitely have seen, which is why we now say, please charge your blind every three months, is that the batteries last too long, people completely forget about charging them, and then they allow them to either run flat or to sit in a very low state of charge. Batteries of any kind, whether it be for your mobile phone, laptop, or anything, do not like to be left in a low state of charge. That's what causes them damage. How long does it take to charge up the battery? Just a few hours. When we install your blinds, we will program the blinds. Now, programming the blinds is really a straightforward process. It's a case of linking the blind to a channel on the remote control. It's a case of setting the limits. Now the limits is we tell the blind where it should stop when it gets to the top, where it should stop when it gets to the bottom. And in some instances, there may be a favorite position, sometimes called an intermediate position, which is like a convenience feature where you hit a button and the blind will go to a common position, which is somewhere between top and bottom. So we'll set that up for you. There are then online videos so that you can adjust 
the favorite or intermediate positions. And if you let the blinds run low and they lose their settings, there's videos for you to follow. They're completely idiot proof and they'll show you how to reprogram those settings.